Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right. So it's New Year's Eve. Yesterday was Bron's birthday. We played the Timberwolves last night. A last kind of, I'm not going to say last second, but a closing moment play uh, where Bron hit a three-point shot that they called a two, ultimately broke our hearts and left us without an opportunity to get into overtime against the Timberwolves. We got to try to shake that off. It's a lot of um, chat, chatter going around about the footage that is shown there where it clearly shows that his foot was ever so slightly behind the line. It's a lot going on with that play, but we just have to forget about it, man. I, I, I left my commentary there last night, and I encourage everybody to check that out if you're interested in what I felt about that. But um, we got to move on. It's a whole other game to play less than 24 hours later. We had a three-hour flight. Our guys had to you know, fly into New Orleans and then proceed to, to try to rest on New Year's Eve. I mean, it's just Bron's birthday. I mean, they set us up so foul with the schedule. And then ultimately how the game played out was just, uh, you know, it's one of the situations where you just have to ask, who hates us? You know, who hates LeBron in this front office, in this NBA front office that uh, would schedule him to be in a place like Minnesota on his birthday that happens to be New Year's Eve the next day on a back-to-back? -back. I mean, seven back-to-backs a season – high for any team uh that's just uh, it, it feels like like we're being uh targeted it really does and you look at how the game played out it's like yeah so you know we got to try to dust ourselves off maintain our composure and then go into new orleans sleepy tired and probably lethargic and try to beat a team that's probably going to be more motivated to beat us than the last one because of how we beat them in the play-in tournament game. Knockout round, we beat them by 44 points. They were embarrassingly bad against us. And Bron barely missed a shot. So D'Lo's not expected to play. He had a tailbone contusion last night on a charge um, that he drew. Uh, so we're going to be down him and, of course, Gabe Vincent. And the Pelicans are going to be without... Matt Ryan, our guy, 37 is a weapon. And also uh, Trigger Murphy is on the injury report as a game time decision. So hopefully he doesn't go because he's a major part of what they do. The Pelicans are a team that uh, has been, you know, an, on a nice little homestand for the last four games. Uh, well, three games, this one, and then they'll play the Nets to end that homestand on the second. But, um, it hasn't really gone well for them. They did win the game against the Jazz in the previous matchup. Um, but the two before that, they lost in heartbreakers against the Grizzlies in overtime and against the Rockets as well. You know, it's one of those situations where New Orleans kind of just hovering around the bottom of the playoff picture right now. Uh, they, they're, they're more or less average. And they have some really high-level young players on their squad that aren't getting minutes. Just like we said about Charlotte, these guys got Jordan Hawkins and, you know, he's capable of going crazy, but they're barely playing him. Instead, they're going with guys like Najee Marshall and stuff like that. So, whatever. So, they, you know, when you push your average stuff to the front of the line, of course, it's going to reflect in how your team's doing, and that's kind of what they're doing to a degree. Uh, and they don't really have a good point guard. Now, I haven't heard any, art, you know, uh, trade rumors about them trying to go after a point guard, but I would imagine... If I were in their front office, I would probably be one of your main competitors for DeJounte Murray. I just want to say that to all the DeJounte people. Uh, New Orleans probably needs him more than we do, to be completely honest with you. And that's also a place we could send D'Lo as well. Because they need a point guard bad. They really need one. So I could totally see us sending D'Lo there if things uh, go a certain way. It makes sense for them. Um, with that being said... They got C.J. McCollum kind of running the point, which I think is just, it's, it's not really the greatest. Uh, he's more of a scorer, two-guard guy. And, you know, I mean, he's been playing pretty solid coming back from injury uh, a few weeks ago, so he should be in, in, in solid form. I expect for him to try to have a big game against us, take advantage of our fatigue. Uh, Brandon Ingram, of course, is on this squad, ex-Laker. you got to pay attention to him, to say the least. Zion Williamson, who had a horrible game against us in the play-in tournament, I expect for him to want to come out with a certain level of urgency to make up for that. He's been playing better as of late, so I expect for him to go off tonight if we allow it. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, who also looked terrible in that game. I think everybody in New Orleans looked terrible that game, so I expect for all of them to try to play better. 
uh, just in general, but just to name more players. Uh, Jose Alvarado, of whom we know is going to try to go after that inbound steal. He ain't never going to catch us off guard with that on this channel, so we better not be caught off guard with it here tonight on New Year's Eve. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, Larry Nance Jr., ex-Laker. He's coming off a really big game against uh, the Jazz. He, he really shined there. Um, and we need to be aware that he was not in the playing tournament game, and I think it did affect some of their energy, particularly on the boards. He's going to rebound. He's going to dunk. He's going to do things to be physical. And so we're going to have to be uh, ever so mindful of just how much size the New Orleans Pelicans brings to the table with Larry, Zion, and, of course, Jonas Valanciunas, um, who's a big guy, man. So that's what it is. I mean, they have you going up against the Twin Towers in Minnesota one night, and then 20, 20 hours later they have you going up against 500 pounds worth of players over there in New Orleans. I just I just think we were set up, man, set up. They knew that, and they probably chuckled about it too and say, this is what we're going to give LeBron for birthday, New Year's. You know, just I don't like it. I don't like it. It's petty, and it, it's, it's, it's really uh, something that I want us to to uh, to try to uh, – to harness all of our frustrations into focus to win this basketball game in regards to you they want to screw us over um let's take it out on the pelicans let's take it out on the pelicans la now the problem is is can we score a bucket i mean even if the referees were doing a great job even if the score um was was reflecting in, in us winning even all of that we have to look at our rest of team and realize that nobody scored over 10 points last night uh, part of that was because we were focused on defensive players who kind of do what they do, but not necessarily what we need them to do in scoring the ball. And our scores were, were nowhere to be found, man. Austin Reeves had his worst game in several weeks, uh, shooting very poorly. Uh, Rui Hachimura in 17 minutes shot very poorly. And um, we, can't, we can't really rely on too many other players on this team to score. I mean, everybody else defensive-minded, more or less, outside of our stars, um, you know, D'Angelo Russell, of course, we said he went down with an injury in the fourth quarter, but he was also poor in that game, scoring the ball. So uh, we didn't see Max Christie, but we did get some good things out of Christian Wood, who's been uh, removed from the doghouse and uh, replacing uh, Jackson Hayes. Um, and I think he's done good with it. He's stretching the floor. He's rebounding the ball. He even blocked the shot yesterday. And so I love what I'm seeing from Christian Wood right now. We just got to feed him a bit more, as I always say. Um TP shot the ball extremely well. He three for six from behind arc, 50%. Uh, kind of got away from him because of some other things that he doesn't necessarily do well, which is just kind of how it goes. But the one thing's for certain, his three-point shot has been automatic a good portion of this season, and that's what you pay him for. So if we can just simply ask him to only do that and not expect anything else out of him, uh, we may be surprised when he does give us other things. But as far as trying to run plays for him in the open court and different – plays that you know rely upon him to dribble the ball it's 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 uh it's it's really not going to be the a, a successful thing for us um at all basically from what we've seen so i just need other players to show up and i don't know that they've had any rest coming off a poor scoring game how could they possibly come in here and be hot you know what i mean off of three hour flight and a heartbreaking loss with new year's intentions on their minds i mean it's just very much a trap game for the lakers and the Pelicans for the same reason to a degree. I mean, it's New Year's Eve. So the game's at 4 o'clock, um, 7 Pacific, uh, excuse me, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. And we will be ready for that to the best of our ability. Um, unlimited rest, I'd imagine. So, you know, this is going to be a tough one to win. Just like last night's was very tough. Uh, we're going to have to shoot the ball better. We're going to need some scoring from somebody. It can't just be us struggling. And I hope that some of the offensive struggles came from the fact that we were playing against a, an elite defensive team in Minnesota, the first overall seed right now in the West. So maybe that had to do with why guys look so poor, but really we just missed shots in a lot of cases. And, you know, that's kind of that. Anthony Davis had a fantastic game. Uh, he ended up with 34 points or something like that, somewhere in that range, um, several, several double digit rebounds, maybe 17 boards or something like that. He was really a, a dog, but a lot of what he did was in the first quarter. And I was kind of critical of him for taking his foot off the gas, so to speak, when we were doing so poorly uh, in other areas with scoring the ball. We just needed him to get up to 50 and 60 points on some crazy stuff. And it looked like he was on path to do so, so long as he kept doing what he was doing in the first quarter. But, 
You know, I don't I don't think I heard anybody else criticize him because it was too much focus on other things, which is understandable. But when it really comes down to it, he needed to be an A1 legendary superstar last night to make up for how bad everybody else was playing, you know, particularly shooting the ball. So he couldn't be stopped out there. And we just kept we stopped feeding him. And I just think that, yes, he had a great game. But if you look at where most of that production came from, it came from him in the first quarter. And so that, that taking foot off the gas is what ultimately we couldn't recover from due to the role players being exceptionally poor. Um, so that's really what it is, man. We need guys like Rui Hachimura to step up tonight. We need coach to put more blends on the floor that makes sense rather than just leaning into defensive lineups and offensive lineups and switching them back and forth and watching guys get cooked. You know, them defensive lineups ain't really stopping nobody. The offensive lineups ain't really scoring. We just need we need – Something that Darwin is not giving us, and I'm not sure exactly what it is, uh, but but we need to keep searching because what we have is it's not working. So that's really what it is. When your team comes out against Charlotte and your bench scores 64 points, and then the next night your rest of team can't get over 10 points apiece, I mean, you know something is, you know, drastically inconsistent in your situation. And that's what I'm seeing here. We've lost a game by 44 points. We've won a game by 44 points. You know, we won the in-season tournament and proceed to lose games uh, consistently after that. I mean, it's just it, there's no consistency with this basketball club. None. The role players are inconsistent, and, and, and our coach is and his rotations are highly inconsistent as well. And we just can't seem to find any identity as to who, who we are. So it just balances out to us being average because we never actually know what the hell we're, who we are. So... Thank God for consistent superstars, but how much energy do you expect them to give you when they've been leaned on so much to be that for you? We've been blessed to have AD play at this level, but we need him to play at a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar level just to win a basketball game like last night. You know, and that that, that is, is asking too much of AD, I'd imagine, but it must be asked if we want to win. And so, you know, Braun is doing the best he can, but, you know, he just turned 39 yesterday. You know, I don't know how much you want him to give you off of, off of yet another back to back. And so um, I, don't, I don't know what to expect from this basketball game. The part of me thinks we should win just off the strength of the fact that we matched up so well against New Orleans in the bubble and everything we did against them worked. But I know a lot of that had to do with Braun hitting threes and a lot of stuff that I don't know if we could duplicate in this game, especially with Larry being inserted into the lineup with a different level of energy and intensity toward us. Um B.I. expect to play better. Zion's not going to play that bad at home. You know what I mean? So these are the type of things where you just expect to get a much, much improved New Orleans team with a chip on their shoulder based on how that game looked and how much criticism they took on from it. Uh, they know we're coming off a of back to back. They saw what we went through last night, and I'm pretty sure they're looking to try to hit us with a knockout blow. So uh, we need to be ready for that, man. We need to be ready for C.J. We need to be ready for B.I., Larry. Alvarado and his his thieving ways. Um, if Trey Murphy plays, we got to be ready for his shooting ability. I mean, he he loves to kill the Lakers. Uh, we we just need to find something that works, man. Because last night left us thinking that we can't score on anybody unless they're a bad basketball team. Against Charlotte, everybody's a world beater. Against Minnesota, everybody can't score over ten points. Can't even get to ten points. Thank God LeBron decided to play. He was already not feeling well to start the game for on his birthday. He gave us what he gave us, and we couldn't even win the basketball game because of officiating issues, which I think need to be explored um, in regards to that game. A lot of a lot of what we saw was was dictated by their um, their their actions, in my opinion. And it wasn't just.